All right, welcome back. Uh, so it's time to learn to kinter some together. Uh, one of the best ways to learn something is to do it. So instead of this being a lecture, uh, we're going to get some modules, uh, and we're actually just going to work them together. Uh, so uh, go ahead and click on this link. I'll put it above the video as well. Uh, this is for to kinter practice. Uh, and go ahead and do, do, do what you do best, right? So make a fork of this guy um, and bring it into uh, your own repository. As soon as the fork has been made, uh, go ahead and create a project in PyCharm. Uh, so I'll click on this little download uh, button. Looks like my uh, projector monitor doesn't show it to me here. So I'll copy that to my clipboard. Uh, and then I'll open up uh, Eclipse. Uh, sorry, PyCharm is what I meant to say there. Uh, and then I'll check out from version control. By the way, you could say GitHub or Git here. It doesn't really matter. Um, I haven't actually figured out why there's why there's two. Uh, you can put it on your computer uh, wherever you want. So I'll just go ahead and put it into a folder here. Um, and uh, you'll go ahead and check out uh, to Kinter Practice. Uh, so once you open this up, you'll notice that there's a source folder like always. Uh, there's also this additional folder uh, called More Examples. Uh, more Examples is something that you could just kind of look at uh, after you kind of work these modules together with me. Um, <clears throat> but to be honest, they're just kind of examples uh, that you can use for your project. Oh, speaking of which, big picture. Uh, so your project in this class is a self-selected project, uh, but I do expect that your project uses uh, Tkinter and MQTT uh, at a bare minimum to start and stop the robot, right? So this is something that you're going to use uh, in your project. Uh, so let's look at what we're going to do. Um, so what we're going to do, so I opened up the README here. Uh, your instructor asked you to watch the video. Yeah, I'm asking you to watch the video. Um, we're going to look at the code in M1E. So you can see there's like an M1E. And then we're going to do to-dos in M5. So there's some to-dos in M5. And then we're going to look at 2E, 3E, 4E, uh, and we're going to be working stuff in M5. So that's kind of the flow that we're going to be going through. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up M1, uh, and let's kind of take our first stab at, at learning a little bit about Tkinter. Uh, so the first thing I'll, I'll mention is that there's an import. So there's an import for Tkinter. We could, if we had wanted, say, um, import Tkinter as like TK or something like that. But Tkinter, we just decided to leave it. So whenever you're going to use Tkinter, you actually say the word Tkinter dot. Uh, the reason we didn't do the as TK is that it gets really confusing on like the constructor because then it's like TK dot TK, which is weird. There's an add-on package to Tkinter called TTK. Uh, it was added, you know, years after the original Tkinter, uh, but we're going to be using TTK quite a bit. So some things we're going to get are come from the original Tkinter, uh, and some are going to come from TTK. We went ahead and listed both imports here because usually you'll have both of those whenever you're doing a Tkinter app. It just so happens that this one is so simple uh, that it doesn't need it. Uh, if we look at the code uh, that's here, so we've got... Um, our first object, so we're saying root equals to kinter.tk. Uh, what this does is this makes a window. So it's very similar to like the Rose Graphics windows. Uh, and then we've got an interesting call here. It's um, main loop. Um, and so go ahead and run it. Let's just kind of see what happens. Uh, and what happens is uh, it makes a window show up. And so uh, root is just a window. So here is the, uh, the window. Um, dot main loop. What is this doing? Um, this is kind of like an infinite while loop. Uh, so this infinite while loop goes until you, until you close the program, right? So it'll just kind of stay in that infinite while loop until I close the program. Tkinter, by the way, is what's called an event-driven programming. Um, so, so far in this class, you've mainly done um, like procedural program. It's also called batch program, where you start at the top and you work your way down through the code. But to be honest, that's not how most or not how a lot of things work in computer science. Most things work in computer science is, is they're just sitting there waiting for you to do something, and then they'll respond to the event. So they're just waiting for something to happen, and then they respond to it. Uh, we've already done the sum on the robot with, like, it's just waiting for button presses. Uh, but here it's kind of, like, up to the next level. It's just waiting for events. So you'll notice that there's this print line that says done with the event loop, and nothing has printed yet. In fact, nothing will print until I close this window, and then when I close that window, then it says done with the event loop. So this right here, it doesn't look like an infinite while loop, but it is, right? So it's that indefinite loop, and it doesn't end until you close the window. And usually when you close the window, that's the end of your program as well. So that's M1E. Uh, and so our goal is to talk about M1E uh, and then do to-dos 1 and 2 in M5. 
uh, just to make it kind of flow better, I'm just going to do them with you. You can pause the video and you can do them if you want, uh, but I'm just going to kind of do them as well. Uh, so to do one is to uh, put your name on here, so that's easy. Uh, so that's now done. Uh, could, to do two, after reading and understanding in one, make a window that shows up. Well, that's easy. That's just these two lines of code. So I'm just going to pop that guy in there. Uh, so there I've, uh, I've done to do two. Uh, that was easy enough. Now if I run M5, uh, you can see that it does the same thing as the other one. Now I am going to do one more thing that's a little sneaky that you might not have done by yourself. Uh, and that's this infinite main uh, loop. I want to make sure it happens at the end of my program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut it from this location. Uh, so Control X. Uh, and I'm going to kind of put it down uh, at the end of all these to-dos, right? So I'm going to put it down here, uh, make sure it's indented over. I'm going to put it after to-do 8, because all my other to-dos uh, need to happen before that infinite while loop. Because if they happen after it, they, they won't ever happen, right? So I'm going to run it again, just make sure everything's hunky-dory. Uh, yep, still hunky-dory. Uh, all right, so that's M1, uh, so that's good enough. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll go and cut this video off now. We'll come back uh, next time, and we'll do the button stuff. Uh, all right, so see you then, and we'll make some buttons. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.